What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing for you of the Motorola Backflip. This is the first Android phone that AT&T has carried, what I assume will be the first of many. It's going to set you back about 99 bucks on a two-year contract after mail-in rebate. I'll go through all the specs and take a look at the device, but let's dig in. Uh, I am an AT&T user and I've been long admiring uh, other carriers, whether it's been the Droid, the Nexus One being able to get some 3G speeds on Android. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what the backflip can do. Go ahead and thrash into the packaging, hopefully without slicing off a finger, which is never a guarantee. That should be enough to get in there. For a decent amount of thrashing, we've got the package open. Go ahead and slide it out. It looks like at and is starting to use uh, smaller boxes for their devices. Nothing else in the package. Here is the Motorola Backflip, sort of a familiar looking box. I uh, got a picture of the device on the front. On the side you get some information about legality. Uh, on the back we got some specs, which is probably a good time to go over them. Uh, it is running Android OS, it's running 1.5, although AT&T has said it will be upgraded. Uh, we're also looking at a quad band phone, which is quite nice for those of you that go abroad. Uh, and of course running on AT&T's 3G network. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi up to 350 minutes of talk time, up to 32 gigabytes expandable, a 3.1 inch high-res touchscreen. There's been conflicting reports about whether or not it's resistive or capacitive, but we'll try that in just one minute. And this is running atop of Moto Blur, which is Motorola's sort of skin on top of Android. Uh, it weighs about 15.3 ounces and a screen resolution of 480 by 320. So let's go ahead and dig in. I had a chance to see this at CES a few months back, but it was a pre-production version. So we've got the quick start guide on top. Probably never look at that. And here we have the Motorola backflip. Put that off to the side for just a minute. See what else you're gonna get in the box. Probably the usual array of accessories. You get a USB cable, which uses, looks like micro USB. The wall charger to plug that USB cable into. The just discussed battery and the back of the phone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the phone itself. It's got a very sort of unique uh, form factor here. So the reason it's called the back flip is, well, the keyboard flips backwards. Um, so when you have the phone closed, the keyboard is exposed. They say it's completely sealed in. No dust is going to get into it. Um, it's a little bit on the thicker side, but definitely pocketable. Um, it's not by far not the largest Android phone in the marketplace, sort of probably slots in between. Uh, let's take a look at how the keyboard feels on first blush. One of the knocks I always had on slide out keyboards was that the first row was often very hard to type on because the sleeve screen slid down and often covered it up a bit. Uh, this sort of rectifies that problem. Uh, the keyboard does feel nice, it is backlit. There's a bit of raise and ridge to them as you guys can see, so you can feel the difference. Um, right off the bat, this keyboard feels much better than the keyboard found on the Droid. Um, weirdly, there is the camera, which is a 5 megapixel sensor with, it appears to be an LED flash, actually on the keyboard since, well, it's at the back. So we'll go ahead and take a look, rest around the device. On the back is something very interesting too, it's a touchpad. It uh, lets you control it almost like you would with a D-pad on the front of the device. So when you're using it, you can have your finger touching on the back to scroll along. We'll see how that works. It looks like it does come with a micro SD card of two gigabyte size, so that's quite nice, and a SIM card slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop a SIM card in here, we'll boot it up, and we'll do some uh, quick first impressions of Moto Blur. But before we do that, let's finish taking a look at the device. On the right side, you've got volume up and down, you've got your micro USB port, you've got a camera button, 3.5 millimeter jack, got your call and buttons, Nothing on the left hand side and nothing on the bottom. Uh, it's actually a very clean design. It's got a, a little thinner than it was back at CES. I wonder if they redid the hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the battery and we'll take a look. Okay, so the battery's in before we power it up. Let's see how the stack's up to some other Android devices and it's Motorola Stablemates. So here we've got the Big Daddy Droid. You can see that the backflip is much smaller. We've got the sort of local sibling here, uh, the Devour next. We'll go ahead and stack them on top and you can see how all three devices stack up from a thickness perspective. 
Um, despite its weird layout, it definitely looks as though the backflip is the thinnest of the, of the devices. And the obligatory comparison to the iPhone. You can see how the screens compare there. And thickness. The iPhone's starting to look downright fat. Let's go ahead and power this thing on. I didn't put a SIM card in, but hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on. At least just a quick view. And I'll be doing a full overview of the phone, of Moto Blur, and everything else in later videos. I'll pull off the screen protector. Get that satisfying whooshing noise. And we will test whether or not this is a capacitive or resistive screen, uh, which is pretty easy to do. So it took about two minutes total for the first boot up. It certainly didn't find a network, which I means, think means it didn't launch the Moto Blur interface. Sort of have to go through a setup process. But let's check whether or not this is capacitive or resistive. So I've got a finger here. It says, please insert a SIM card. Go ahead and unlock the phone. And you use the unlock button on Moto Blur, that sort of four square button. So it's saying I can make an emergency call. I can tap it with my finger and it'll launch that. Looks like it will go back to locking the device. Let's try and using a, a pen, which appears to have no effect, which means that we are in fact dealing with a capacitive touchscreen. For those of you that may or may not know the difference, uh, resistive is done by two layers of film making contact, which is why a pen or a stylus would work, whereas capacitive uses just a finger. So we can put that rumor to rest. It is, of course, a capacitive screen. Uh, for more walkthroughs of the device and showing you how the OS works, uh, be sure to stay tuned to technobuffalo.com for all of your backflip needs. I'm John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.